Okay, let's get started on the Touch the Sky lesson. Um, what you're going to need is a black canvas. If you are working with a white canvas, what you're going to want to do is uh, pause the video right now um, and either get some black gesso or black acrylic paint and just cover your canvas in black. So um, if you need to pause the video, go ahead and do that. Now I'm going to walk you through step by step with a tracer. So you have a tracer um, and you're going to want to tape that together. And then the tracer comes with a quote and I have several, um, I have a printable available as well with several optional quotes. So what I've done um, is I've cut out this section and put the quote that I want down here. And then um, what we're going to do uh, is I'm going to center this where I want it on the canvas after I chalk the back. So. Uh, when we're transferring onto a black background, um, what you're going to want to do is take some chalk and go over all of your lines. Flip over your tracer, go over all of your lines with white uh, or pastel colored chalk. White or yellow usually works best. I'm using chalk as a transfer is oops very inexpensive and easy to do and the beauty of using chalk is that all of your lines can just be wiped away get all of your lines chalked up. We're going to flip it over and then recenter it where you want it on your canvas. And then just as if you were using uh, graphite paper, you're just going to go over all your lines with a pencil. give you your general shape of your bird with the wings. Now this bird uh, is not meant to be super realistic. It's kind of just a, a fun rendition. As we're working you can absolutely substitute any colors you can adjust the shape um, add or take away any details and make this your own white outline and then I'm going to do the same thing for my quote so I want you to um, pick one of the quotes that resonate with you that I've included or um, feel free to find your own quote that means something to you uh, that will definitely make the piece more meaningful Center it where you want it. Another thing you can do um, that I definitely always encourage is don't be afraid to use your own handwriting. Everybody is critical and afraid to use their own handwriting in their art. But I think it's just a little 
snippet of who you are, and I think it's wonderful to include. There, awesome. So um, once we have that transfer, what I'm going to do is come through and I am going to use just uh, a paint marker to permanently mark these um, outlines so that I don't lose them. Um, as we're painting, we tend to move our arm around and um, I definitely want to make sure that I don't work, lose all these outlines. So. not worried about perfection right now. I just want to make sure they don't disappear on me. So this is an optional step, uh, but you can definitely do it um, here in the beginning. Okay, so we have that done, and now what you're going to want to do is choose the colors uh, that you want to use for your bird. Um, I recommend using some nice bright colors. That's kind of the fun of putting something on a black background here as it uh, will really make things pop. So think about that when you choose your color palette. Um, <clears throat> what I'm going to do today is um, choose some nice warm bright colors here so uh, maybe some reds and some yellows um, I'm gonna start with an orange and maybe a pink so this is called watermelon pink and this is orange and so uh, right now I'm just going to basically fill in some color here I don't I don't need to worry too much about these details as long as I am uh, mindful about where I am placing my colors, okay? So the first color I'm going to use is a nice bright orange. And what I want to do is just add kind of a central focal point here on these wings. And I am going to use short um, brush strokes here and that will give the effect of feathers and I'm just gonna color in the middle of this feather or this wing with some short feathery brush strokes and then I'm going to do the same thing um, my line here is going to come kind of under this beak and up towards the top. So, just repeating those short, feathery brush strokes. I've gone over my beak ever so slightly uh, just so I'm not seeing that beak line. <clears throat> when we work with acrylic we layer so it's okay uh, to go over those edges because when we add the next layer on top it's going to cover some of that. Okay. So this orange is sort of transparent and so what I'm going to do is move on to another color and then I can come back to that and add um, some more orange on top. 
trick that some people use to help the opacity is adding a little bit of white to your paint. Um, it certainly does help, but at the same time it will lighten that color. Um, I chose not to do it because I don't want to go too pastel with this painting. Okay, so my next color, I'm choosing uh, kind of a, a watermelon pink, this is called. It's just a nice, um, fun, light pink here. Almost a medium shade pink. Um, and so I'm going to add a large row of feathers under the orange. Again, just using those short brush strokes all the way across. Nice big area here. And then I am going to add just a shorter section um, with not quite as many long, well, the same amount of brush strokes most likely, but shorter, just a little bit shorter. And I'm gonna let those go right into the orange a little bit. And then I'm gonna follow suit on the other side with some nice large strokes on the bottom. Again, going over that edge line just slightly, following the shape of that wing. And then coming through with the shorter strokes on the top. I'm not following any um, specific pattern from um, a known bird. I'm just uh, filling in this color kind of on my own accord here. So there's no right or wrong. Uh, you don't have to worry about this being um, realistically accurate. This is just kind of a fun bird painting with a fun little inspirational quote that I love. I love to surround myself with inspiration. Uh, the next thing I'm going to do here is pick a nice bright yellow and I am going to um, add some more color. I'm trying to look for a almost a cad yellow cadmium yellow. I'm having trouble finding my cad yellow. <clears throat> I'll use this one. This is brilliant yellow. I'm going to do um, is just add some touches of yellow um, and what I want to do, I'll start on this side, I want to carry this orange up through the end of that wing. So I'm coming kind of from my orange up through the pink up to the end of this wing. And I'm going to come through here adding this yellow from the pink to the edge of the wing. And I'm just using those fun short little brush strokes that's going to give us a feathery feel. So I'm just filling in the bottom of that wing with some fun yellow. A lot of which uh, is going to get covered up with some layers. So we're just touching that on there. 
filling in these wings. And then over here on this side, some of the wing is cut off, so I'm just going to let that go right off that corner there and then start filling in with short brush strokes the bottom of these wings. Just going right over those chalk lines so that I don't really have to worry about them. And I'm not overthinking with the pink. I'm just, if it mixes in, it mixes in. It'll make a fun shade of orange. No worries. All right. And then up here, what I'm going to do on the top portion of the wing is um, the feather structure changes a little bit um, on the top and it'll go from those short um, fluffy wings to some taller, taller, longer, um, longer feathers. So I'm just going to kind of just change the direction here and add some long lines of color right on top. Now we are just adding these base colors that are going to show through some of our, our top details, so not going for perfection, just setting the shapes there. darker pink. Now I have a, a watermelon pink. This is called dragon fruit. It's a little darker. I'm going to come through and I'm going to finish off the top of that wing with a dark pink. You can use a magenta. Um, this one here is called dragon fruit, but I just want it to be a little darker than the pink we used previously. filling that in. Right now it just feels like we're almost like we're coloring. We're just filling in these shapes with color. All right. Um, it may seem like I'm just kind of winging it, but I do actually have a strategy here. I'm starting with the wings. Um, this section of wings can dry a little bit while we work on the body a little. So the next thing we're going to do is move into the body of this bird. Um, uh, I'm going to add, I'm going to get some more of that orange, the same orange I used here in the beginning, and I'm just going to add uh, some orange on what would be his throat. So his throat's going to have kind of just a curvy shape right here. Um, slightly down into the right of his eye. Okay? And that's that's all I need to do is just add some strokes of orange in there. I'm gonna get that nice and bright. I'm gonna grab some of this yellow. And this is where we can have some fun with the color some yellow maybe around the bottom of that there um, maybe some yellow strokes 
strokes through his body. I'm going to add some orange um, around his eye here. pink. Definitely going to need some pink there because I made a splotch, right? Um, this is my darker pink, so I'm just going to add some, just some shape. I'm just de defining this bird's shape with these colors. There's no right or wrong. This guy's just got different color feathers. So I'm just using some of these colors that I started with. Adding some feathers down here, just some color. And then I am going to move down into the tail feathers again. Um, you can use light pink or dark pink. I'm just gonna add you know, a couple swoops in the, the top of each feather. Remember, there is no right or wrong. We're just adding some playful color to this guy. So starting with my light pink here, my watermelon pink. I'm just going to wipe off my brush, not even going to clean it, and I'm going to come right back over with uh, this darker pink, my magenta. And I'm just going to add some darker touches right over the top, wherever you feel like it needs some. The beauty of this is you can add um, brush, you know, you can leave your brush strokes if you like to see brush strokes. Um, it, it's called, you know, a more painterly approach when you see the brush strokes. Or you can smooth them out if you don't like to see that, if you like a, a more clean and uh, finished appearance. Totally up to you. So I'm just going to do this until I run out of paint. Beautiful. And then, um, okay, so this is my first layer here, okay? Is the bird finished? No way. But what I wanted to do was add my first layer in all of these colors um, that I already had out on my palette. Now I'm going to come back through and... I am going to add some new colors to my palette here. Let me clean off my brush. Um, so now what I want you to do is find a bright blue that you like and I want you to find uh, a bright purple that you like. So I'm going to use Ocean Blue and Purple Rain uh, from, these are Deco Art Americanas. Um, any blues, uh, and like I said, you can choose your own colors. So any blue or purple that you like is fine with me. All right, so the first thing I'm going to do is start filling in some color on the wings. Um, so I've got this base layer and I'm going to come through and I'm just going to add uh, maybe some small brush strokes 
right over the top of that dark pink. Again, I'm not uh, overthinking it. I'm just going in, just going in there, having a good time with this. And then uh, I want to add some blue to the lower wings. So just adding um, some brush strokes here. And there's no specific, you know, number, no pattern I'm following. I'm just applying color. Um, I'm going to continue this whole lesson with these short strokes because this uh, gives the featherly appearance. And then I'm going to do the same thing on this side, um, kind of in the reverse. So I did the left side. On the left side of my bird over here, I'm going to do the right side. Okay, now using the same blue, I'm going to go in and I'm going to add some feathery brush strokes on his head. Now here's where it's a little different. Okay, so I've tapped in some of this light blue color. Um, I'm going to mix in just the tiniest bit of light pink on my brush. I didn't clean my brush, I just grabbed some of that light pink and I'm just going to blop, blop. I don't know that blop is a word. I'm just going to tap it in there so that it blends. And I'm going to fill this kind of with splotchy, splotchy blue and pink color up here. Those would be really short feathers. Um, if you want, you can dab in some more blue, tone that down a bit. We're just playing. Underneath the eye here, I'm just gonna add some, we'll call them swoops. Swoops of color, just with that blue. Not worried about if the pink is mixing in or not. Um, and then I'm going to outline the body with this blue by just kind of tapping it in there. So you can apply the color with your brush and then kind of go back and tap. If you want variation in that color, just mix in a little bit of that pink or put a little pink on your brush. Um, green is also another color that blends well with, with uh, blue. Purple will blend well with blue. So I'm just kind of filling in the space by tapping. And the reason why I'm tapping um, on the body here is because I want to give the appearance of small feathers. So small textury feathers. And as you can see, I'm moving quickly. I'm not overthinking where I tap. I'm just letting it happen. Okay. So my goal is just to cover up some of that black, all that black. I don't want to see any of that black on the head. Just tap, tap, tap in there. And when I get to the bottom here, I'm um, going to add some long, thin blue brush strokes. Um, and I'm going to mix, you know, I'm going to add some in blue. I'm going to go back and pick up some purple. And I'm going to go back and pick up some blue. So tap my brush in blue, add some strokes, tap my brush in purple, add some strokes, tap my brush in blue, add some strokes. So just trying to cover up some of this black, anywhere you see black on this bird. thing I'm gonna do I'm gonna wipe just wipe off my brush I'm not worried about it being clean I just want to get a majority of that paint off I don't need to put it in water um, and I'm gonna take some clean blue on my brush 
and I'm going to just outline this beak here. I'm going to give this some definition. Um, again, go slightly over your feathers so that you don't see any of that black showing through. And then I'm going to give the body just a little bit of definition with an outline here. All in blue. Now I'm going to leave um, you know, the brush strokes and all that on the inside nice and fluffy, but I'm just going to define the edges here of that body, okay? And then I am going to add some blue into the tail feathers. Um, now what I want to do is finish up the definition of this shape. So wherever I see black, I'm going to add in some blue strokes. That's it. I'm not worried about the top. I'm just doing kind of the bottom portion of this feather. Adding in some blue. Meeting up with that pink on the top. Defining the shape. I've defined the, the feathers at the bottom there. And we've got our first and tiny bit of our second layer started. Okay. Um, so, what I'm going to do now is clean off my brush. I'm not doing a whole lot of washing in the water. I'm just, you know, since a lot of these colors are blending. Uh, I'm really just wiping it off on a paper towel. And I'm going to just um, continue to add color and layer onto uh, this bird here. Um, the next color that I'm going to use um, is a darker blue. And then I want to get some red in here. So um, I've got a nice bright ruby red and I'm going to use um, a navy blue. Again, your call, your choice, this is your bird. So actually I'm gonna set this right here. All right, so with my red, what I'm gonna do, same brush, um, is I'm just 
I'm, I've got paint on my brush. I'm going to put it up here uh, close to the yellow and the pink portion at the top and I'm just going to kind of roll it across. Uh, the reason why I do that is because I don't want it uh, to be perfect. I want it to kind of be um, haphazard. So again, get some paint, nice thick layer of paint on your brush and then just kind of awkwardly roll it across uh, where your pink and yellow is at the top. And then I'm going to do the same thing down here uh, at the bottom where my orange meets the pink. I'm just going to kind of tap and roll that brush. And I might do two layers down here. Tap and roll that brush. I'm going to add um, some some red strokes in these lower wing feathers, just short, sweet, um, little tappy strokes. This is all about. Uh, layering color, adding lots of bright, beautiful color. using that same brush. Um, don't be afraid to maybe just add a little red up here. Uh, we're working with, um, we're trying to make this color palette consistent through the bird, so don't be afraid just to add little details. So I'm adding just a little bit on the face, a little bit here on the neck, uh, around where my pink is, maybe where it meets the orange. And then I might follow this down just a little bit into the blue. And by using these colors in all parts of the bird, it makes it more consistent. And so I do, again, want to add some red down here at the bottom. Um, and I'm just going to do it by adding Maybe a stroke or two on each feather of this nice bright red. like you're done with the red, go ahead and clean or wipe off your brush. And now I'm going to add in some navy blue, which will add some nice dark touches. Oops. It's navy. Ugh. I'm going to have to use it right from the bottle because this one has a piece of plastic stuck in the top. Okay. Um, so again, I'm just going to add some dark blue on there. Uh, up here at the top, I've got some of these bright blue marks. 
I'm just going to roll my paintbrush right across and add some dark blue up there. I'm just tapping and rolling. Use whatever technique you like to, um, you know, just get some imperfect uh, random brush marks on there. I'm going to, um, let's see where else I need some, some touches. I think I'm going to add some more right here where the red and the yellow are. Just bring that, uh, that dark blue down a little bit. Just tapping. Um, now what I'm going to do is raise this up towards the camera so you can see just how very imperfect it is. This is almost impressionistic. Um, I don't want exact details on this bird. I am going for uh, fun, colorful brightness. And then what I'm going to do here is just, I'm going to add a big stroke to define the bottom of this bird here. Just defining some of that shape with dark blue. to um, maybe define this wing stroke here a little bit with some blue. So just adding a little curve on each wing. added some dark blue at the top so I want to make sure I continue that through the bottom here so I am just going to follow this curve at the bottom strokes. Maybe add in a little here. On the belly. So wherever you think there needs to be a little touch of blue, let me follow through some of this beak just a little bit. Um, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to come in and I'm going to define this eye a little bit uh, by adding blue uh, just in the eye shape there. Um, the pupil I am going to keep black. I'm just filling in uh, around it. So I've got a nice black pupil in there. So I've added some darkness. Uh, now I want to go back um, and maybe double up on some of these light colors. So clean off your brush or use a different brush. do so I have my orange and my yellow from earlier and what I'm going to do is just take a scoop of this yellow and mix it in the orange here I'm just going to change up that color ever so slightly just going to lighten it it's not going to be much different from what's there just enough that it's lighter if you want to you can even add a little white I don't want it to be drastically different, but I want it to be just a different tone. All right. So again, I'm going to come back over, uh, right over the top here of where my orange and my pink meet, and I'm just going to tap 
tapping strokes. Tap, 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 tap. This is not uh, a perfect science here. We're just adding fun little taps of color. here too, kind of where my yellow and orange meet. Don't forget, add some of this color wherever you feel like your orange, your orange or your yellow need a little dimension. And you can even add a little in the tail just to bring that color down. purple. I didn't use it. Now I'm going to use it. Okay. So clean off your brush, get a new brush, wipe off your brush. Um, now with the pure purple, what I'm going to do is just wherever I have navy, I'm going to add some of this purple next to it. So I'm just be following some of these lines wherever I have navy except for the eye so I'm gonna add some purple down here in his little tummy oops and I'm gonna spill it on my palette as well don't do that Ugh. If you do happen to get splotches of color on the black, you can always just paint over it with black later. Um, okay, so I've got some purple there. I might wanna tap in some purple up here. Like I said, wherever you've got navy, I'm just gonna add a little purple to brighten. Brighten that up a little bit. So I've got some navy in the wing. Just gonna Tap in some purple, swoop it in to define that shape. And then of course what I do at the top, I'm going to do at the bottom. So adding in a little purple to these feathers, just a little swoop. because I want my little bird down here to be bright and colorful and fun. Okay. So once you are happy with the color of your bird, um, you can move forward. I think um, I'd like to add just a little more dimension uh, where the pink is on my feathers. If you don't need that, you do not have to do that. So. Um, I'm going to use my light pink that I had in the beginning that I used for the feathers and I'm going to mix a little bit of that with purple. And just kind of have a, a pinkish purple color, lavender color, and I'm just going to tap some of that into this bottom side of the wing. That just tones it down ever so slightly. And then up here where the light pink is. Anywhere I've got the light pink, I'm just going to tap some of this pink-purple mixture. is your bird so you can add fun little details however you want. 
fun little details. All right. So the next thing I'm gonna do with my birdie bird is get my liner brush. So a lot, what a liner brush is, um, you can use any thin round brush. Um, liners come in lots of different styles. Um, an actual real liner brush is a very long and very thin. Let's see if I have one. Okay. So here are three different kinds of liner brushes. Um, as you can see, the one on the top is longer and thinner. The one just below it is short but thin. And then this is just um, a number four round. So we can make these lines uh, improvising with pretty much any uh, liner brush. And what you want is some thin white paint. Oh, oh, I forgot a step, okay. Back to that bright blue we used in the beginning. So this is my ocean blue. Um, before we add white, what I'm gonna do is take a liner brush and this ocean blue, the same blue we used for most of the bird's body. And I'm just going to add some color around the eye. Now I'm keeping the, the circle of the eye black. So I'm just um, painting inside that navy blue, leaving some edge, but not painting that black circle. That's just going to define that eye a little bit. Okay. All right. Now back to what I was about to do. You need some thin white paint. Uh, I keep a bottle of uh, this uh, craft acrylic. Um, once I use about half of it, I fill half of it with water and I've got a nice thin white paint. So if you don't have thinned out paint, uh, you can certainly just mix that on your palette, uh, adding a little bit of water to your white. And what I'm gonna do is start to add some uh, fun, uh, lines to outline this bird okay so I'm going to start with this wing here and just go around defining each part of the wing today at dropping paint all over my canvas. All right, so I outline the bottom. I'm going to outline the top here. And then the same for this side. Outline the bottom. I'm not worried about my strokes being complete. These are just fun defining swoops. And then come through the nice line across the top. whether or not this outline is complete. I just want to define these shapes to the eye.
Now before I add my white to the head of the bird, I'm gonna use the same liner brush and just a little bit of bright green. So, um, let's see. This is a nice bright apple green that I wanna use. <clears throat> Again, I'm going to thin it down just like I had my white nice and thin. I want to use this green nice and thin. And so I am going to fill in this space on the beak with the green. some fun little green strokes here at the top of his head just to add some texture again with my liner I don't need them to be super bright they're just they're just detail I'm gonna add some green down here just a swoop or two um, some swoops in the belly and maybe I'll even add in some green to the wing just like I did with the white just adding some definition to um, I might even add some green down at the bottom again because this bird is so bright and uses so many colors it's hard to go wrong Maybe you don't want to add swoops. Maybe you want to add dots or um, spots. Be creative. That's okay. It's okay. However you want to do it. All right. Now I'm going to come back through with my white, clean off my liner brush, and now I've got my white up here I am going to add some outline to my beak doesn't have to be perfect add some definition uh, over here I'm even going to add a highlight maybe where the light reflects off that beak some highlights by the eye and now this is really where the bird uh, comes to life. I'm going to add a little dot there, a little dot here, maybe swoop. I'm going to add some defining white st strokes down here at the bottom just to define that body like I did with the wings. Be careful not to put your arm in your paint. And then maybe even some 
some white feathers here. Wherever you feel like it needs a little fun. Now in these bright colorful feathers, I'm gonna add a dot and a swoop. Dot and a swoop. this bird is that there is no right or wrong. We're just adding, adding fun. So I'm going to dot and swoop all of these feathers as well. Dots, lots of swoops. All right. So I am happy with my bird here. And the very last step after I clean up my mess. So remember I said um, I'm messy. I I've got these white spots all over my canvas, which isn't a big deal, because I can come through with some black and just get rid of a lot of that when I'm finished. Um, but the next thing I'm gonna do, I'm gonna try to wipe up as much of that as I can. All right, so I've got my quote here at the bottom. So I outlined it um, in a paint pen just to keep myself from smudging it. Uh, that part is kind of optional, but what I'm gonna do now is come back over with just the tiniest bit of this uh, thinned out white and I'm going to go over this quote because I want to look like I painted it on there. I do not want to look like I used a paint pen. Not that that's bad. Uh, you can also just go back over it with a paint pen and make it nice and thick but you want to definitely make sure your quote stands out. So that is it.
for my touch the sky bird. I hope you have enjoyed this lesson. I hope uh, you found some freedom and fun in adding these colors and layers and making this look um, personalized and uh, that you have your own inspirational quote that you love and your own bird that inspires you. So um, thank you for joining me. And I can't wait to see what you create. Don't forget to tag me at The Painted Cicada. Um, every Friday I enter um, all my tags. And um, anybody who adds their picture into our uh, Painted Cicada artist group into a drawing for a freebie, which could be something fun in the mail. It could be a free class, an art supply, um, or a special gift. So. Um, thank you again for joining me and remember only from the heart can you touch the sky.